Hello and welcome to the King Heroes Journey podcast. My name is Beth Martins. I have a very special guest with me today, David Jason Giaramita, who is uh, in the UK and he is one of our esteemed guests for the Choose Freedom Law Summit. Uh, welcome to those of you that are jumping in. Hello, Johnny Cool in the chat already. We always have a lively chat here, David, so uh, there might be a little bit of interaction. Maybe people are going to have questions. Uh, but uh, I'm super excited to have you here. Uh, you, David, for those of you who don't know, is an, uh, you know, I will say an expert in law. There might be other ways that you would describe it. We're all, uh, you, you kind of called me out earlier. We're all selling ourselves short in, in some respect. And uh, these, are, these are really good days to look into exactly what is the foundation for the slavery that we find ourselves in. Why is it that the, the school boards and the governments and uh, you know, the, the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority, for example, here locally can come along and just say, oh, 12 year olds, you can make your own decision about potentially life changing, uh, you know, health life changing decisions. And, uh, and then your parents don't have to be there. And if you want to just lie to them about what you're doing, that's okay with us, right? And uh, this is this is one thing that I would love to talk about uh, uh, as well today is is the effect and the interaction in the legal realm with broken families. I know that's how you started out in your in your uh, journey in law. And uh, I know you've told your story several times. We are so excited to have you at the Choose Freedom Law Summit. So if you haven't yet joined up, you guys, then uh, totally recommend. All of the interviews are live. David David's hasn't gone live yet. And that's one of the reasons we're here today to preview it, but also to go deeper into some of the more uh, spiritual esoteric side of etymology. Personally, I am extremely fascinated with this subject. It, uh, it, I find it so enlightening when I hear about the ways that the the, uh, the language ends up used against us. And uh, hello, uh, Indie Glow and Flattership Bear here is here as well. Feel free to share this. Many people uh, are going to be interested in in this work. So, David, welcome. Thank you so much for coming. And would you like to take a moment to introduce yourself? Thank you for that. You've rather put me on a pedal stall in some respects there, but uh, I'm just a humble idiot um, in some respects, and uh, I've um, I've got a fascination with the use of phonics and sonics and with research into law and the various areas of law to understand the implied meanings and definitions. It's uh, it's each man has got a woman has got a journey of their own, and everybody's got a particular. Uh, part to play I use that term loosely we don't play parts we're not actors but there is a there is um, an element for us all to play and some minds take to a certain area law in itself is quite boring the uh, the law that we know of the commercial secular codes but the biblical Abrahamic laws and the natural universal laws the hermetic laws the languages that are used to uh, to describe them so I'm, I'm very happy to be here I'm in the chat room as Indiglo, so I've logged on. So I've just said hello to the chat room there, and um, I'm yeah, I'm happy. We're going to have this informal, um, live, interactive chat, and I will field any questions that you're. I call them scribes. We're not sub below, you know, subscribe, submitting. We're, yeah, we're off already, but uh, yeah, the scribes themselves, welcome. Thank you. I'll give you a heart and say much love, and uh, I'll hand it back to you. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I love that. I, I've, I've picked that up now, rather to not call my audience subscribers that are below, but uh, but scribes, because that actually fits in really beautifully if I just run with a little tangent in my, in my head, because what gives us authority is our God-given ability to create, right? That's, that's where our authority actually lies. And I, I learned this year about the physiology of that and how, you know, the brain is like a seed. In fact, it's named after the seed, the cere cerebrum and the cerebellum. It's, it's pointing to the seed and that wax-like substance that is highly impressionable so that God's energy can come and etch uh, your, your reality, right? You look around and people have completely different experiences right now. Some, some people's lives during this time have gone very downhill. Other people have thrived in this time and used it as a chance to rise and connect with community and know the truth. And so we, we definitely are authoring our life, but we have been lied to that that's not the case. 
And so, uh, you know, I, I've got a lot of directions we can go and I have a feeling this is going to be a very fluid conversation because every time we talk it is. It is indeed um, Sarah and Abraham or Abraham in different um, passages, books, scriptures. So Abraham, Sarah, Abraham. So again, um, that was um, brought in a conversation with Brother Bernacci some years ago when we was talking about monosyllabic languages and the use of um, those in themselves in this um, physical phi cycle. So phi, P-H-I, mathematics to do with the pi. You obviously know about the... Um, Maybe we, I assume gematria, the number, a numeric alpha, 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 beta sequencing, the golden ratio, um, Fibonacci. You know, so the uh, the phi cycle world we live in. I'm going to bring in to this topic the letter X, the number ten, water, electricity, and horses that are all um, surrounding this uh, common tongue that we know as English, um, Anglo English, American English, Canadian English. Uh, you know, they've all um, got their um, differences, but they're basically the same, known a.k.a. as legalese. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. And that's what I've discovered for this last year as I've dove into the <clears> law <throat> trying to get out of my diapers in that subject, that the, the language as we use it in our day-to-day -day conversation is not the language we're reading in, in legal documents and acts and things that are being used uh, against the populations, uh, you know, more than ever, I guess there are times in history and, and other places, we're pretty naive in Canada here, right? We, we like to trust people, we like to trust our governments, we like to trust our doctors, we like to trust our teachers and educators, and, and then it's just all handled. You know, you go off to work and you, you live your life and then, and then your child is uh, so-called taken care of, but what we've ended up doing is, is handing them off to the beast, right? They used to bring the baby I, I even hate to talk about this, but they used to sacrifice the babies to m the firstborn. And in a way, we're, we're still doing that. Yes, agreed. We've, um, we've lost confidence and trust is a, is a key aspect to, <clears throat> to how business operates. There are various areas of trust, as I said on our first chat, um, legal trusts, ecclesiastical trusts. Uh, Abrahamic trusts and private lawful L O R E trusts, not L A W land, air, water, which you know um, the trust in itself has been broken. We've got case law references. You've seen across the media in the last year reasons not to trust the various institutions. Government themselves are not uh, so much as what we know it to be. They are all corporations. America. Uh, China, uh, England, uh, France, uh, Romania, just about all that have a central bank are in that gang, um, affiliated with some aspect of the church, ecclesia, um, the papacy, the Vatican, and, um, and um, uh, banks, monarchies, papacy, so government themselves, they're not sovereign, they haven't got parliamentary or congressional sovereignty, um, I'll get into that later if need be, but uh, it's, uh, it's a definitely, it's, it's, you end up in places through your discovery um, that you'd never imagine you'd go and um, it is like a circle um, all roads lead back to Roma in my experience to, <laughs> to find out where the uh, the totalitarian tiptoe entered into this at the point of zero or 33 um, CE common era and forward 2021 years or, or 2000 roughly from 33 to now um, and we we trace backwards to zero and then from zero six thousand years to um zoroastra zoroastraism um so it, it's amazing um in itself but we'll focus on mainly a 2000 year lineage for this chat and may i just say that if anybody's here live and you're not awake and alert then you may um, find it hard to follow and you may be scratching your head. And if you're on a replay of this cast, then maybe you should um, watch this when you're um, fully you know, awake and alert because if you're not fully conscious, then you may find it. This isn't an insult. I'm just saying what were I able to do with the uh, comparisons may um, make your brain um, swell a little bit, which is which is always good. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I often have come away from like law meetings and conversations feeling like my my brain might bleed, right? It's coming out my ears. 
but I've also noticed that through repetition, through listening over and over and over, and hearing what I feel to be the same thing over and over at the same time, uh, it, it really does get into my blood and my bones, and there has been a major transformation in, in knowing who I am. Right, because every single time you step into public, you're you're being asked to be something other than your living man or woman, and 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 we're used to it. Like all day long, we're signing our life away. We're we're uh, you know cooperating with powers that actually don't hold our best interest at heart, and uh, and and so you know the words are such a big part of that because again we we feel like we're we're talking in one language and and they're using the same words with with different meanings and different intent so that's why i i find this so incredibly valuable and um are you are you open to sharing this story about how you came to this field of of uh of lawful thinking in the first place because to me this is actually so important right now with regard to children here in canada i think i m mentioned already if if you're age 12 or older you can go and put a, a, this uh, injection in your arm without parents consent you can you can um, even lie they're saying oh just lie to your parents they don't need to know <laughs> kind of thing like this it's over the top it's already it's already um out of control in this respect and and i'd like to unpack a little bit about how that has happened uh through the language and over time how the children have got out of their parents um guardianship the the the, the legal and spiritual guardianship that we're supposed to have over them especially with regard to to broken families are you open to speaking about that yes it's a it's a good segue to enter into as to explaining how um i've obtained this gnosis and what my driving force behind that was so um yes uh, before we do so i'd like just to mention that know thyself what you said there um i have I have Greek, Italian, English, and Irish lineage in my uh, in my genetics. So um, that's you going on mute, is it? All right. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, Checking sorry. The interconnection. Uh, and um, the one of the I've looked at lots of continents and also the ones that I'm related to. Know thyself. An ancient Greek um, aphorism. Know thyself is one of the Delphic maxims, um, and was the first of three maxims inscribed in the. Praneos of the Temple of Apollo at Delphi, according to the Greek writer uh, Pausanias. I think um, Pausanias, um, if I'm saying that right, I'm not fluent in Greek and Italian. Um, for the purposes of clarity, and before we go on, um, I do only command uh, simple, plain English. I do not speak legalese. Please don't interpret my um, words for legalese unless I expressly point out I'm referencing legalese you know, for the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt, because that helps you cognize where we are in the structure and the language. I'm not a member of the law society, the bar, temple. I'm not related to them in any way, licensed, affiliated. I do not have, a, you know, permission to use that crown copyright language. And, um, you know, uh, that will help um, others to interpret because there are issues with language and where we are. So um, we don't use that because... Uh, you know, it's not our club, it's not our society. So Oxford editions, definitions, and also referencing um, the, the Bible, the New Testament, the Old Testament, and, um, you know, generally English, plain, simple, Anglo for me, English, and then um, referencing Bible, various, and KJV for that. Ecclesia may come into it, ecclesiastical church speak as well. So that's um, the uh, disclaimers out the way. Thank you. And, oh, and, and no legal advice will be given. Do not interpret anything I say to uh, Sister Beth today mm -hmm. for, you know, legal advice. I'm not giving any. I'm not allowed to. I can give you information and duly inform you due to my um, skin in the game. And this has been since 2015. We established a sovereign and um, private trust. Uh, and then we opened a public trust on Facebook. And we have the private domain as well. So my name, I don't subscribe to a name. I'm commonly known by a name. I'm, I have a calling. That would be David. And um, Jason is spelt differently to the typical spelling because my person has a name. 
and that's in English grammar an object, a thing. It describes, you know, in English grammatical styles and linguistics of Oxford, dictionaries and, you know, uh, language and uh, literature. Um, well, I don't have a name, I don't go by a name, but I'm sometimes known to use one if it's a benefit to me. So I am called by my effectively Christian calling, if you want, forename David. Jason has been changed to the, the, the person's name and the family and estate and clan, my lineage and bloodline, DNA, is Jeremita from Castle Vetrano, Sicily. So I've made a point of appearing as man privately today. And um, the reason I know all of this and I've learned this is because I had a family split up some time ago and um, the mother and I went through mediation for access to my sons and children. And we use that loosely, but uh, yes, uh, sons, assets, my blood. And I ended up after a while in a high court with a barrister. Um, and um, it was two years, £20,000 spent to get access from the banker, judge, robe, arbiter in a fashion. All those words are correct, but uh, the, the um, positions at the time you know me being the claimant wanting to the defendant sorry but like defending the claims of the mum that i couldn't see my um, sons because of various concerns and i had to go and jump through legal hoops with a barrister in a court um, a crown court in england and i knew none of this you know if i knew then what i know now i could have got this done within a month or six at a maximum and um, I would have done it effectively and I wouldn't have needed a barrister. I wouldn't have been classed as a infant. Infants is a military term, infantry, baby, being born by mum is classed as an infant, you know, um, being delivered in a delivery room, products are delivered. But so I was in a court based scenario and what I speak of in this chat is based from first hand knowledge, skin in the game and extensive research with regards to after those two years of a court battle um games are played on a court not law as such but games you know and uh, and, and i've learned then how to help other fathers um, and mums if need be families hold it down and um, reach an amicable um, mediation or resolution without the need to go and employ uh, solicitors one that solicits and uses their body sells their body for time is effectively a prostitute a solicitor solicits themselves and sells themselves. They use legalese. I didn't know that. Um, the, the, the language that looks like English, sounds like English, and writes like English comes from a bit dictionary, a black dictionary called Black's Laws. And the implied meanings and definitions that were used in those court-based uh, you know, interactions were, um, w that's why I needed the counsel and, uh, you know, uh, uh, barrister to uh, interpret the foreign language that was being used there, unbeknown to me at the time. I thought uh, everything was as it appeared to be. There are lots of tricks and traps and pitfalls of the court, and especially if you're um, at a disadvantage and handicapped and you, ho you haven't got a translator. So uh, I had a translator, but I wasn't aware of what was going off. And uh, I thought I need to tell everybody about my discoveries thereafter because um, to wrap it up, my mum, Julia, Julietta, uh, was um, in the law area and she was a lecturer of law, various areas of law. And she's got some letters after her name for her qualifications at that law level and she um, helped me when I had questions um, and I was confused about the court process and she explained to me the legal personality, which is the Mr all caps, title, name, um, cognomen of Rome. And um, she told me about the language and I initially was blind to all of this. I used to be a DJ um, and a warehouse awesome. manager, you know, I so I, I like the phonics and the sonics. I have got some little rhymes and stuff I could say to you um, that I like to make fun of this um, occultism, occult meaning secret, not dark, you know, uh, magic as such, but it is words that are spelled and spellings of words spellings are how the uh, witches allegedly cast spells on you this language does have a cursive narrative to it curse cursive words you know the cursor on the screen so spellings and curses cursive language cuss words shortened from cuss cu curse 
um, it's all you know relevant and I'll go slowly this is why I said at the beginning if your head's not in the game come back later when it is because we'll take you on a big old journey of which uh, may shock and astound you to say the very least so that's how I've why and how I focused on this not for a um, we call it treasury direct account because the Queen and the government parliament have a treasury department we're not in it for secure party creditor even though we can talk about money insolvency bankruptcy and all of this uh, lack of uh, intrinsic value behind the money we already know how to uh, effectively conditionally accept charges and discharge them and manage charges you're charged civilly you're charged criminally you're charged financially and when you die um, from sorry when you happen to have a heart attack and your heart is arrested you may be charged back to life so all this of trying to loop it loosely in for you of where we're going to go and uh, why and how <laughs> I yield <laughs> that's brilliant <clears throat> so much good stuff something happens to my brain when you talk like this like it, it's such high energy it, it, ra <laughs> it raises my energy it raises my understanding and you're very tuned into sound you said i also am extremely tuned into sound uh, as, as a coach for example i i don't mind having video calls with people because the majority of my clients are somewhere other than than i am uh, and, you know, if they're more comfortable seeing me and me seeing them, that's fine. But I actually tune in better to the sound of the voice alone because that carries so much information. There's there's code in it. And I can't even necessarily translate into something that, you know, I could tell you what I'm sensing. But I, but I get a lot of information from sound, way more than I do get information from mm -hmm. sight. Uh, and, you know, and we've all become very visual people. I, I actually had a, a past client call me last night and say, like, could I have all the videos of those audios? Because I can't, I can't pay attention uh, uh, easily enough. And I know what that feels like, right? You get distracted and you're doing the dishes or whatever it is and you're not hearing anymore. But uh, so there's something about sound. And I know, I know you could go deep down into this one if you want to start with, with um what you what you understand about the words around that and i think it's to do with like phoenicians and phonetics yes um the old testament uh, phoenicia um in itself hebraic text and um, the old testament being written um, would be kind of the uh, phonetic then so you have phonos uh, we have um phonics the sonics the sound so for instance the best way to how I got introduced into this um, was initially technology DJ equipment the phono leads denote um, left and uh, right red and um, white connectors for the amplifiers and mixers so that's something most will be familiar with and um, phono um, phonographic telephone phony um, you know, yeah, you say is a fake, you know, the, the, and the, the dictionaries have definitions in them, um, definitions, definitions, Phoenicians, Phoenicia. So we've done some research and we can trace it back. Uh, Bonacci and Maxwell have helped me in their presentations. That I've uh, had, uh, you know, chats with jo um, not Jordan Maxwell, Santos Bonacci. Um, I don't know about Jordan at his state now, but uh, the implied meanings and definitions of these languages, lan, gu, and age, um, is very important on this journey for the cognizance uh, of, uh, of, of the phonics and sonics. So if we say, can you see me, you automatically know that that is with the eyes because of the context of the question that I've given to you. But there is the, the, the land and there is the sea the law of the land and the law of the sea. The law of the land would be um, basically common law, the Ten Commandments, Abrahamic law. The law of the sea is maritime, as you know, uh, maritime, maritime and admiralty. The law um, of the air is, um, is mainly um, where the ecclesia and trust, the uh, holy seas, we'll call it, um, the seas of commerce, the seas of space. Uh, so sea, water, liquid, but then you also um, know your ABCs. So you, therefore you see that there are C's and there are C's of the C's, the C's are the Caesars of Rome, oh. Caesars. So the, the, these are the letter C to hear it, um, the word or the letter, the visual C, the liquid C and the letter C, unless you 
um, take it in context with my conversation with you, you will automatically cognize what C I am on about. But they are only um, or sep their only other relevance is when you see them written and then um, you see that the phonics sound the same. You can't tell if I said to you in a test, what C am I thinking of? So there are three of them. They all sound the same. So to identify which one, you'd need to see it written. So these are the tricks and traps of the Phoenicians in a courtroom-based scenario. As I've mentioned, legalese, the judge thinks that uh, you can't, the judge knows you can't hear him. The banker, banker, bank, Latin, bench. He sits on the bench. Um, Latin could transfers into, um, you know, banker as such, bank, money, um, court, game. And so because you are a deaf end ant, a defendant, you've got the deaf there in the end and the ant. And it, you break that up and I can go into the why that word is that none of these words are there by coincidence. It's uh, thousands of years evolution from, the, say, Phoenicia going all the way forward. The black nobility, um, uh, are, are have, you know, are heavily involved in this. The grey nobility, so there's a black pope, a grey pope and a white pope. Each one has a remit of um, a certain jurisdiction, but Black's law, Black, um, like, um, like what we said, a Protestant uh, um, priest dressing Black, the troopers, the state troopers generally dressing Black. So there's a codified everywhere. Um, um, when you do this discovery, you will find the codes and um, Black's law dictionary. So uh, the deaf fendant the judge you are listening to knows you can't hear him so as you are the deaf end and he may shout at you so you can hear him it's not that he's getting angry and uh, if you don't set out your um, status standing in capacity within your presentation not re-presentation but the presentation um, of your uh, defense or claim as it is and you haven't put this down in paperwork before the court to let them know your status standing in capacity then the the court will not be able to um uh, uh, you know arbitrate correctly um you won't be at a equal level playing field so we have to uh, recognize that the phonics and the sonics of all of this language um you know where uh, it's uh, you're at a deficit and a handicap so that's why we uh, we focus on on this it's uh, it's of ultimate importance that we establish what languages we're speaking what term um, words are the implied meanings of those words and the definitions and the dictionaries that they come from so for the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt are always written at the top of our notices and communications to offices of a legal nature and we say um, it's written in ox ford or English, plain English, but ox is a bull and ford is water. So bull stopping water, ox ford um, definitions is a bit of a clue there as well. Oxes come into it, water, as I said, with maritime admiralty, Romans, as well as the Roman Caesars and the empire that you know of with the swords and the shields and the boats and the battles, Romans. And uh, it's, uh, it's the dictionaries and implied meanings that are critical when you're speaking and commanding that language, uh, there's Cambridge English. There's um, there's um, obviously then you could look at speaking from the Bible and Bible references, Ecclesia, and um, the the Phoenicians and the Black nobility and the Reformation of the Church and the inclusion of England having the monarchy and um, the church and the state. Basically, the Queen rec represents the state. She handed Parliament and government control and the judges control the king at the time of we've got a queen elizabeth now but um the 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 state have handed to the church the responsibility and the the the, the king's conscience is represented by the jurisprudence of the judges acting on behalf of the crown there's the queen's crown there's the crown of london the city corporate city of london that ensconces itself since 1066 in london town and you've got London City, which is separate to London Town. So the jurisdiction's there. And then obviously for you, um, Canada, being close to America, that's Washington, D.C., with the, um, you know, the separate landmass to, we'll say, the Americas. And in Italy, the Vatican City, separate to Italy. So there's three tri-states um, that operate this crafty business of money, wealth, um, law, 
and um, we'd say politics in general, religion comes into it with the ecclesia, and it's um, it's very very much multifaceted and full of um, you know pitfalls at, at every level. So as long as you're clear. Um, from the offset and you point out and you require from them to have a level playing field um, <clears throat> the language is to keep part and to know and to uh, be able to command and use that and to hold to account and uh, and you'll often find a bit of Latin mixed in there you know which is uh, useful to know some of those terms Ecclesia, English um, and uh, legalese so there's um, what four languages going off already so you have to be very careful and uh, it is important because if you don't uh, set this out you can end up in muddied waters and um, deviating from the subject matter before you even know it so uh, we've got a lot of history to look at over 2,000 years and uh, the way that this has been implemented to benefit the church the kings and the queens you know, and the bankers, it's, it's uh, again, uh, the number three comes into that uh, quite a lot. So um, I'll, I'll yield there. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, you were talking about the, the crown, and then I've also heard you talk about, uh, you know, like when a, when a baby is being born, there's a crowning, and we have a crown of our head, which is extremely important spiritually, right? Like energy, energy literally rises, and, and you become alive to this connection to God is, is my experience. Uh, you want to you want to talk about and plus plus the king and the royalty and all of that that I suspect is very tied in. Yeah, so people often say um, about sovereignty and the, the private domain that's listed there is a foundation education, a foundational education, you know, trust that we've set up a lawful one, um, not non legal. And we, um, we are proud to say, We've gone from a public legal person, a default status of public legal person, to private lawful, L-O-R-E-F-U-L, you know, um, authentic, um, what, incarnate, sovereign um, womb man, because all man's womb man's uh, come from mum. Mum is the, the uh, and if, let me just put this right, mum is the one that carries all life and gives um, life to via the, the borning process, because ships are birthed. B-E-R-T-H and B-I-R-T-H. So if you don't see the word written down, birth, B-E-R-T-H and B-I-R-T-H both sound the same, but they're written is total two different meanings. One is water, boat people and vessels themselves. And we are housed, a spiritual a housing in a vessel, um, if you like. Um, I, I am in a body, a consciousness, a, a soul and a spirit in this body. So when mum gives life to all the kings and queens or we say princes and princesses of the realm we um we are in our private capacity and at the age of innocence at that point and so the the the, the medical terminology is baby is crowning so if we are crowned at b boarding stage aka birth by mum then we can all claim that title and it is you know quite vital that you hear this um and recital to correct the title which is an equitable title um, with regards to the church and the beneficiaries and the trustees the church being uh, trustees man christians uh, and when i say christians anybody of non-legal status in any particular religious faith um abrahamic judaism and christianity are the three major ones but we can involve um, India, we can involve China, the Japanese, the Chinese, we can involve Rastafari's, um, Pastafarianisms, all of us are, if you are in a private lawful capacity, you know, and um, baby being born of the waters, again of mum, and being crowned, but uh, in a commercial legal sense, um, hospitals connected to military hospitals, if you look at the um, evolvement of them, they were initially um, made, you know, um, commonplace because of the war and the need of hospitalization for the foreign war policies and the war in itself, um, medics in hospitals, uh, in military hospitals, in the war battlefield, you know, and uh, products are delivered by major 
um, online or uh, shopping retailers and they will deliver your product to you if you can't go and physically get it. So products are delivered and a doctor in a delivery room is delivering and birthing. So that's where you get the docked or an or is something you use to row. And so therefore, that's a, there's a lot of commonalities with the language that they use and the particular words that they use. Each specific word is very, very important for us to cognize the truth. The truth is um, subjective. You will only see um, the truth due to the size of your consciousness and what you can cognize. So the truth um, is the truth always. And you will one day look at the truth and you will see one image. And later, after your learning, um, discovery, research, um, you will then come back to the truth and you will see a different image of the truth. But the truth is the same. It changes due to your perception of that, due to the the uh, knowledge that you acquire and due to the correct knowledge and education, um, you will then see, uh, you will get wisdom and that, that will then, you know, your consciousness expands, so to speak, not physically, but mentally. And you can then use that to know yourself and to correct and assert your rights at law. Um, it's very, very interesting. You, you know, surgery in itself is electricity. Electricity has a surge. A surgeon is there to perform an operation and um, the surgeon, the surge, you know, electricity power surge. So uh, it's uh, the medical industry is, um, is very much uh, wrapped in its own language in itself. Um, the heart arresting. Arrest is to stop. Boats, when they can't go out on the sea and they're unseaworthy, are arrested in the port at the dock and they are docked and arrested. So, again, the officer, the trooper may arrest you, which doesn't mean to detain you which is to, in the station. It means to stop you going about your business, like the heart stopping. And uh, it's, uh, it's very deep, uh, if I may just quickly continue with the train of thought that may interest your viewers on these three platforms then um, to go further. Um, you are um, seen by the paramedics or, uh, you know, hospital if you're in that uh, place and you have a heart arrest. They will try to charge you back to life by putting the paddles across the chest and putting the spark into you and um, you get charged back to life. So the uh, currency and money is a charge. You can get charged financially. You will be charged. And so therefore you, you look at a, a note, a Federal Reserve note for most of us from the central bank and you will see a water mark in there. And that denotes a charge in the paper um, in the rivers. Uh, generally the rivers the rivers have a flow there is a cash flow and there is a current to the sea and the current sea is to also describe the money so you see again how these words are you know uh, interconnected even though they're in different areas of medicine finance uh, you know law and uh, and and, and it, it goes on like the bank will be in the river banks control and manage to flow the water and they the banks control the flow of the water in nature and in with regards to the central banks they will also control the flow of the currency on the land so we're in a, a paradigm which is, uh, like I say, I'm happy to take questions if you've got any that you think are relevant from anybody watching on the platforms and to explain um, and articulate and reference. Uh, I can't do it all um, concisely because I haven't got all the references, but I've got a lot already to bring to you to show you that uh, between these um, institutions, jurisdictions, medical associations, financial institutions, military uh, policies and, uh, you know, institutions and uh, the nobility, the Jesuits, the, the cabal from, you know, all of this. It's, uh, it's truly amazing uh, how and where. So it's no wonder we're mixed up in that respect, not to mention in the scriptures with the Tower of Babel and the offense to the creator and the confusion of the tongues only leads to, to more, you know, confusion layered upon it. <laughs> I yield. <laughs> That's so awesome. I love that. Um, this, by the way, mm -hmm. is the King Heroes Journey podcast. If you are new to this channel, there's been uh, some steady streaming in from, oh, nice. I love it. The, yeah, you got the king, right? That was, that was, uh, that was a beautiful thing. And, you know, I, I, make, I make up my own words. I, I take license, or not make up my own words, but I make up my own intent for my words. And as it turns out, that's what's going on, 
right? Like it is, it is the person who authors, uh, say, a letter or a document or a notice or anything like that. You're, and especially if you state it, you're in control of, of the way that you use those words and the, and the meaning and the intent. And then speaking of confusion, it's so fun because all my life I have noticed that language is effectively in the way of clear communication. And, uh, and so you and I had a, had a fun little uh, dance back and forth uh, in setting up this interview. And, and it, was, it was confusing because we have hosted David for an interview on the Choose Freedom Law Summit. It has yet to go live. So just in case you're wondering if you're already signed up for that, then uh, it is still to come in the next uh, probably week or so. Just have to look at the schedule. And uh, and then so I wanted to set up a second interview to come on the King Heroes Journey podcast to share with all of you guys that maybe haven't got into the uh, the law studies yet. And uh, and then as of even last night, it was a good thing I was up in, in the wee hours. Uh, it, it looked like we'd had a, a miscommunication based on our text going back and forth. And, uh, you know, the, then, then uh, it was up until last night, we thought something told both of us thought something different was happening right now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And how how those words get in between and then you know like so you know with my with my life i'm i'm tied to a lot of these devices and you're sitting here like a moron typing and it's giving you the the uh you know the autocorrect and all of this we all look like idiots now typing through those machines that make so many mistakes and reduce us to that uh, that place of of infancy where where we you know we just all um don't make sense and 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 get confused and i think of the tower of babel right like we're all using words but nobody has any idea how the the intent is actually being put forward right so you say words and i think i know what you mean and you i say words and you think i you know like so um have, having said that are we are we moving deeper into language or is there some sense in you that we are moving away from it because to me this actually has been a year of unprecedented telepathy right where i just think of somebody and they call me or i just say oh wouldn't it be nice if so and so came on my podcast next thing you know they reach out to me and you know all of this kind of like oh you know you just think of somebody and and then and then next thing you know there's some evidence for there being communication much beyond words that are so slow and clumsy and you know even our best because you're very clear and I t I tend to be very clear it, uh, at least I go I can make great efforts to be clear and still we had a confusion, right? So what do you think of all of that? syncretism <clears throat> synchronicity and um, notice the inclusion of chronos within that crone time <clears throat> chronos father time if you research that astro theological connection that's another part of our language the astro theology um and um chronos uh, synchronous synchronicity um some people call it the west have invented and dispelled this with um, the word coincidence coincidence so paths crossing um yes um you could go into the quanta the um magnetic uh, attraction um with that the uh, magneto electro connection that we have but uh, we often dispel um the divinity of the realm that we're in <clears throat> and say um it's just coincidence but uh, to some extent it is divinity it's the divine matrix it's the it's um something that we often uh, don't believe in and we think is just uh, random but nothing in this realm if you truly explore it and you have looked at the scriptures and uh, i'm not just talking about the holy scriptures and the old testament but the the indian side of it the uh, asian side of it the greco side of it the germanic side of it if you've looked like where we have then there is some kind of message we are in an age of mess and we have an important message with that and uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's just yeah it's uh, it's something that we feel what what you could have it described to you as whatever you inwardly um project you outwardly attract and then you would call it murphy's law you would call it sod's law you would call it the secret they've spent lots of money making lectures about this but anybody can learn the secret you could call it prayer uh, but the actual fact what you've just mentioned is 
you are manifesting your reality and what you concentrate and focus on you will then bring into your world so if you concentrate and focus on an individual a soul that you haven't seen for some time or that becomes for some reason in your thought pathway then you will then um, connect to them with this is the internet before the internet this is the age of uh, yeah. um, discovery for us you're right um, Aquarius is approaching the picture the uh, age of information is upon us the invention of the internet you know we're probably both uh, um, fortunate enough to see to remember the world without the internet and then mm -hmm. we've seen it arise and how fast we can you know network and contact but uh, before the internet itself as we know it now there was obviously others in this realm using um you know egyptians and uh, before the egyptians using technologies that wasn't uh, you know fiber optic based um people that will say there are people that um that can do remote viewings that the government used for highly classified operations and these have been tested and proven and there's countless white papers and papers on there with regards to the human brain soul spirit connectivity with regards to that so um it's uh, it's definitely real and um, i'd call it syncretism and synchronicity i do believe the planets and the zodiac uh, the kingdom of animals above us um, and the celestial uh, energies are helping us and i believe if you vibrate at the correct resonance and frequency to quote nikolai tesla and um, frequency resonance vibration um, if you're in that correct state, you'd also know it as the chakras, the points of the body being aligned. You are not losing the fear, but you learn to control the fear. If you let fear dominate and you're in, like, we'll bring in the letter X. X is uh, 10 in Roman numerals. X is 10, so uh, say 10, S-A-Y and then T-E-N to say 10, X, X and 10. But then you've got uh, S-A-T-A-N, Satan. Then you've got Saturn and the uh, father, the, the planet, the, the eater of its children, um, Saturn in itself, Saturnalia. If you research what the Saturnalia cult is, they're a cult of which could be connected with the church and because they dress in black and because of their belief systems and they can be connected to the judges and the Saturnalia in itself and uh, the, the letter X and 10 um, Roman numeral obviously is the 10 there and why that's important we have a from Sumeria a base 10 mathematical system that we use going back before that and uh, there is um, there is a there is a vibration that uh, that's around that you can be involved in, which is to do with fear, intimidation, and losing direct connection with the source and the the, the energies, the uh, the vibrations and pathways above us that we have disregarded. The Bible, the basic information before leaving Earth, will say bibliotech. Um, here it will Bible abbreviated a heliocentric bibliotech. Helio is sun. You know, and the sun, the sun being reborn, Jesus dying, coming back to life. Um, the planets, hey Zeus, Jesus, the planets and the connections there. There's a certain area of consciousness that you can get into through discovery and knowledge and learning and stepping away from the, the, the deception, lest you be deceived as some of the writings in the scriptures. Once we take off the persona, the mask, and we see things for what they are, and we become um, using our discovery and you changing your status standing and capacity moving jurisdictions to some extent through management of self this estate is a biological estate that's the most important estate not real estate as we know it land and houses and money and property that we focus on again wrong vibration wrong area to true wealth and true riches come from within um, trust is our one true currency my word is my bond and you know and, and and those kind of things children the blood are our assets not gold not money if we don't look after as you've brought back to the earlier part of the conversation the uh, the sons and daughters of ours and we neglect them then we've lost focus we're in a we 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 are in a in a, on the wrong pathway so once you attune yourself through various means, meditation, education, the schools indoctrinate us. They've um, his story. His story is not. Uh, it's his story. The winners of the wars often then write the uh, correct version of history to their liking and delete 
the, the, the true history and they label it as mythology when really mythology is the true we find in our discovery the more true account of what's gone off and the academic writings of history a hokum phony pish pash I'm not going to swear on any of this broadcast but I'll come close to it I'll be honorable and so yeah you you get into the vibration and you know then what's important to you and um, the Buddhist teaching material things are not to be you know gained as such other things are our true wealth and when questioned about meditation um, I wasn't there but from what I've read and seen you know um, he, he was asked what has um, meditation given you Buddha and it's not what he, he has been able to gain from meditation and buddhism and zen like uh, methodology we'll say zen like um it was uh, it was what he lost he lost fear anger hatred um you know and in, in this uh, existential x is ten shul existential environment research what existentialism is and that will hopefully open your eyes again when man is born and crowned um from mum they come through a serve x a cervix so again these aren't by chance you know we've done an amazing amount of research so you can get into that um, whichever one suits you we don't have a particular faith as such um, I just have a belief and to be honest a Zen like or hermeticism um, from the Hermes and Thoth corpus hermetica is what's taught me to to be able to uh, get into that correct vibration, manage the fear, love is the key, fear leads mm -hmm. to hate, you know, I reference Master Yoda if you want with that respect for Star Wars fans, and uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's you tap into something, I call it a sacred contract, universal, we're all connected as one family, doesn't matter what you are classified yourself as and your faith and your and this is what they don't want us to do the establishment the the club of rome the papacy the monarchies they want us to fight one another and be fearful to hate not love disrespect and uh, and we are learning now through the teachings and uh, getting together putting our pieces on the table and um i will reference uh, quite a lot of names throughout this chat uh, alan watts neville goddard Greg Braden, Bruce Lipton, Jordan Maxwell, Santos Bonacci, many, too many to name, but they're some of the forerunners that have helped me do my discovery, uh, many more to name, but I'm not going to go through them all now, but that's some that many of your scribes may be familiar with and works and teachings of the uh, academic side of it and the King's Colleges and the institutions don't tell us the key parts. Uh, Sitchin's is, uh, translations of the uh, Sumeria clay tablets uh, have helped a little bit but I believe they may be somewhat incorrect uh, lots of books and uh, you know uh, theologies uh, pre-Christian gnosis ancient teachings Dead Sea Scrolls you know Assyrian texts Aleppo codex languages themselves uh, and that's what that's what's got me to where I am so it's, it's a lot of work we can give you a booster in that area but uh, if any of that interests you or any of them names then you are and you know them then you would be on the right path <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very good very good <clears throat> yeah we're all standing on the on the backs of giants one way or another and to me that's the superpower of human beings if we can use those words that well I, they're, i'll use them with my intent meaning meaning the soulful man or, or woman and uh so we we do get to create our lives and create our meanings and uh and and we hold that full power that we are uh, you know, never, ever, um, it, or it, it will never be revealed to us how much power we actually have. We're always being taught that somebody else has the authority and is going to make decisions and keep us safe. And, it, you know, the, the jabs are e safe and effective and all this kind of stuff. I wanted to, I wanted to go back uh, to just one point that I got sparked with. I, I studied in India. I went eight times and I didn't, you know, I'm not going to claim any kind of fluency, but I did learn to read Sanskrit letters and it, because I, I love music, I love to sing. And so I wrote a bunch of music to mantras and I wanted to be able to do them justice, not just go and butcher the sounds. Because in that language, unlike English, the sounds are the meaning. So if you change the sound, you change the meaning. 
right? And you can't just sing a word with, and, and give it a, a different uh, motto, which is really interesting. That's the, that's like the matter and mother and, and, and matrix. And you talked about uh, the, the womb. And then the word like Saturn and Satan. In Sanskrit, the word sat, it means truth and existence, right? There's nothing more pure than that. So, so do you think that word has been has been stolen? Like they take they take the purity and they invert it like everything else? Sorry, I'm just uh, Indie Glow's going in the room there, just uh, looking at the comments as well, and uh, I'm eager to see the uh, the comments. And I'm open to. I'm not here to in you know insult or offend or i don't mean any i'm saying this with love and respect and i hope you see that for what it is uh, chat room there so yes uh, the vibration the uh, yeah it doesn't it's just which is the true where you you there's always something is, uh, before yeah. that there is um there is a lot to be considered but uh, the meanings you're right it's the vibration uh, that is the key so the english language phonetically is rubbish and it's impure um the way that the romans have codified it jupiter the planet jupiter by jupiter the peter the jew jew peter you know um is their um realm and their society you have mentioned there uh, a society with the sanskrit and the types of cultures and i would say they're more pure and less adulterated they haven't been defiled they're more um not close to nature organic original harmonious beneficial um the teachings of the of the shaolin monks and the buddhist with the chants and the om the vibration themselves this language we are speaking now is um is cursive and it's bad for us if we look at it uh, scientifically it's wrong it's all wrong and uh, it's been may i say the word and this isn't swearing but it's true to what it is it's been bastardized for an advantage we look at dr masoro imoto yeah one quick yeah. thing you can swear my podcast so just feel free <laughs> well i'm respectful of the families and the the, the young bloods that may be around and right. <clears throat> it's a cursive language but i it's at times it does it's very um what's the word there um, descriptive for it suits you know what we need to get the point across but i will limit yeah. that and be very wary of it but um it's been yeah the, it's been done like that so it's counterproductive if you look at the frequencies of love and uh, the uh, hertzian frequencies and how the cells so yeah you're right uh, i have come across um various uh, languages and dialects uh, italian francais greek modern ones and i've looked at the other languages i'm not an expert in any of them but i'm aware and i'm aware that some of them are more beneficial to the natural um, resonance and frequency of the body itself and those uh, resonances will heal the body which is why for instance the monks or even the mantras of india and places when they do the chanting um it's uh it, it will have a beneficial the uh the bowls that they have the um what are them bowls that the um crystal is it or something where they make the the resonance there and it will heal the cells regardless you know uh, hospitals using different technologies not medicine um to heal the body um there's uh many beneficial ways to use a language and this monosyllabic language that we currently know as english which is legalese to be fair um, in most what we're taught and indoctrinated with doesn't do the resonance of the body um, the Schumann resonance will say comes into it doesn't it the brainwave resonance is it, it, it's counterproductive yeah so uh, there's a lot to be said for that indeed mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. interesting so good. so good yeah I think yeah I think oh I got a little bit of an echo and that's better now yeah super good um let's see what i have here and and what about um the the like mother and matrix and you often hear for example in the law world like you know um the, the matter of the court or or bringing the matters forward and and then the 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 brainwashing that takes place there that that you think that there's something real uh, you know, I've been really learning the, the difference between the, the this like civil law and 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 criminal law, and then and then the vast majority of civil law or all of it is is crime without a victim. So so and and you know what do people pay all day long is 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 based on this civil law, and how does yeah. that yeah how does that relate back to 
to like the mother and and your understanding of of the of matter and all that and so i'll let you go now <laughs> well again it depends on the on the language that you're speaking so when the the civil court systems the roman secular codified laws are put before us um, we treat them with the contempt that they deserve and um, we recognize that to be if you look at the teachings of many cultures they may be slightly different but the, the basic fundamentality fundamental um, lessons of them is do no harm so we used to recognize quite predominantly in the in the freedom um, liberty, liberty movement uh, you know across the realms the common law aspect but common law would be the law that um, Moses brought down from Mount Sinai from the great I am and uh, you know broke the t clay tablets at the foot of the mountain when he saw his people worshipping bulls and uh, Torianism, the Taurus um, so to speak the bull the buller so um, when we go to the mother the madder the madder the earth Adama um, in the scriptures built from created from the mud of the earth so when you get into that etymological root references of the different languages going all the way to we'll say phonetic hebraic and forward through the various civilizations and the changing of the languages and you know how they've done that it's been designed in a way by by the um the the, the most powerful and warmongers that um, took over those civilizations. So diction, Aries, Aries obviously connected to the planets, Aries. So, you know, you've got the diction for fictions of the diction, Aries. You've got secret Aries, which is secretaries, you know, Aries and star constellations. And these are uh, officers of ices, of ice, water. So water and earth again, earth, common law, common law, Abrahamic. We're not say that it's right because I've got a lot of issues with the Roman canonization of the New Testament. And we'll save that for another chat, hopefully, and go into that further respectfully and with love and articulately. But Mada, Mother, Adama, um, Mud, Eve, Electron, um, Rib coming from. Um, there is Lilith as well that was uh, needs to be brought into it that was wouldn't be subservient to and got allegedly cast out and Eve came along um, Adam and Eve uh, at atom and electron atom um, atom all is atom apep Egyptian mythology comes into it so there's different dialects when you say mother Gaia could be known as mother as well we've got the creator the father always referenced as man um, a male energy a male source not man as such sorry but i need mm -hmm. to try Absolutely. to help you well, yeah it's it's uh, yeah. so mother then if man created father uh, um, a male energy created man themselves the creator then you've got the mother the mother earth so mother was used to create a dharma from the from the madder the you know and the, the words that go with that uh, terminology at the language of the time that we see so um the, the facts of the matter matter you've got matter which is physical objects the physical the phi cycle matter um in in physical realm and then you've got the subject of the matter and the matters um yeah civil there needs to be then under you see the common law is to do the social common law which is to do no harm injury loss based on we'll say the 10 um maxims of law and the, the 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 ten commandments and they've got biblical precepts with them so the roman secular codified law when you look at the ten commercial maxims of law has got biblical precepts you know for management with the axioms and the maxims the ten maxims have them precepts with them and they reference the the books uh, i haven't got all of the references with me to give you but i look at the red letter kjv holy bible i've got references and chapters and verses that i can articulately bring to you about sovereignty and law and victims and life and i'm not saying that this is my bible but this is where the law comes from um matthew for instance wherever two or more are gathered in my name then jesus says he is with them at law two witnesses make a fact those that make the claim at law whoever it be civil or criminal must provide are duly obligated to provide the material facts of the matter aka the burden of proof so the matter 
the mother of the issue is that there is a, a claim. Those that make a claim are obligated to provide the proof. If it's a civil matter, it's generally to do with money and the state will claim to be the victim. And that would then bring us into the oxymoronic language of a criminal offence. Or you will say in the states across the pond, Canada, a felony, a felony offence. And uh, you get cited citations for um, such things as where there is no victim. You've not actually broken common law, the social common law, the which references, as I've said, to the Bible's commandments as such. The common law that comes out of the, 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 uh, the Senate, the state, the constitution of um, Congress and so forth is not law. It's written by man. It's manuscripted. These... Um, the Apocrypha and the Bible are written by man. God didn't write them. The Creator didn't write them. They are manuscripted. Man has scripted them. Um, then they're allegedly the words of Jesus, the red letter part, and um, of the Creator written by the apostles and um, disciples themselves of Jesus. Um, again, another another show to break all of that down, which I'll gladly do for you. And I mean no offence. So when we look at law and you say that civil is administrative and over here I'll go back to Anglo to help out um, because it's UK public administrative civil which are rules and policy you can't have a criminal offence because you've got an oxymoronic state of statement criminal means you've harmed somebody and you've broken social common law um, prerequisites which are harm injury loss fraudulent dealings theft um, rape murder you know um, you get tried for um, we'll say a, a murder um, intentional murder a shooting a stabbing which is happening quite a lot it will say common law uh, murder in the first degree which is a common law offense so common law, that's why it's common law, because it's based on those biblical uh, maxims. And I urge you all to search. Uh, if you're on our domain, they're in there and are in our publications that we've given away for free, what those uh, common laws are and how they cross reference to those teachings. So then you have the congressional and parliamentary um, rules that are passed out, which are the basis of statutory ruling rules. Um, rules and policy not laws and so therefore the corporations which are governments which are businesses which are non-sovereign so therefore they are just offenses and that's it you've offended a rule of the author the authority notice all words with power will begin with alpha uniform au au is the uh, element on the periodic table for gold gold is the strongest most precious metal so therefore au words author authority authority authorized when you uh, write a notice out and then you put your autograph not signature because signature is on behalf that's what we call the equitable um asset the equitable asset that's your consideration if you sign with full public commercial liability and do not assert your rights and retain and reserve your rights as the principal uh, set law grantor um, uh, creditor then you accept with that signature on behalf of your person and you give the authority to the author that has given you that agreement to consider so the the civil um, system is roman and secular and that's the part of the deception lest you be ye be deceived that we're warned about we swap over from the see before i finish that and go to the next part the, 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 the state assumes that we are all legal persons by default and those codes from your state side and our state side are mandated upon all persons by default and they are statutory codes that they believe that you should accept but we'll go for the scriptures and no respect of persons and I'll get the chapters and verses if need be and put them in the comments afterwards as i said i can't articulate everything i'm no scholar i'm just a simple idiot that has a lot of knowledge more than most but it's a team effort so if you are no respecter of persons grantor of dominion god that's not creator that's not elohim and various other words that we have there grantor of dominion and you are created in the image of um i can i've saved some passages that i can reference later for um, the ways, you know, the, the, the important for me to mention for the people in the room and the Christians that take things literally can have a different variation upon things. Um, um, you know, they said for good work, we stone you not, but for blasphemy, because you being a man, make yourself God. That was um, in respect of Jesus quoting 
And uh, Jesus replied, isn't it written in your law, I have said you are all gods. Um, he's quoting the 82nd Psalm in that respect there. So um, you've also got to look at the 10th chapter of St. John, verse 30. There is a passage where Jesus says, I and the Father are one. So there's a lot that I can articulate with regards to God and references to that are written and codified in that uh, new canonization of the Testament. And the King James Bible a variation itself is like a codified handbook for law um, referencing how we would look at um, both the Old Testament the books and the chapters there that are written in the Old Testament at the top for me and the New Testament at the bottom. So there are references within that I've got bookmark passages to use in legal defense for civil claims to 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 um, dispel and repel those charges because an, uh, uh, a criminal offense shouldn't be put together like a sovereign citizen should not be put together that's going to get you in hot water and it's going to aggravate you've mixed jurisdictions you've mixed public and private the, the citizen is the is the public and the sovereign is the private so if you say you're a sovereign citizen you're saying you're a sovereign private citizen public you shouldn't do that you should be one or the other you cannot join the two um, oxymoronic statement within the linguistics and grammatical styles that should be adhered to like mixing the, the your oil and water should not be mixed civil and um, public legal code then crime and that's UK, Civil Public Legal Code, UK. So policy and rules can't be used to break the law. So if you know what the law is, and we are the law because we are crowned and we are given that right, and you fail to assert your rights, so another maxim at law, which will be the same for America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Commonwealths and foreign territories where the central banks and crowns are relevant and present, okay? If those that do not assert their rights at law have none and your lawyer your solicitor your barrister will not inform you of your rights you need to know your rights and they are various and many but if you go into a courtroom battle and you don't know who you are and you don't know thyself you don't know what languages are being used you do not know your status standing and capacity you can't manage your physical estate you can't manage your residual estate and you can't keep the state of mind in play and in check and you can't be um, putting yourself uh, so you're not a deaf end ant at the hearing i noticed that comment in the chat room by whatever scribe it was well said and noted um, then you will lose and so therefore you know we we we've got various ways of helping you understand that these uh, these positions that we're in as default are not fair and they will not tell you what your rights are we will i'll put links in um and uh, and fine you can search on any non-generic please don't use google a non-generic healthy search engine will get you the 10 commercial maxims of law and one of them 10 you know uh, is those that do not know their assert their rights have none as well as what i've mentioned already on this uh, one hour and 11 minutes so far so we move to law from uk public civil rules and regulations secular codified you know statutory acts acts are for actors you know and we're not actors we take off the mask the persona and we step into man biological connecting to source creditor grantor grantor of dominion and we go to england and wales and we find law is present for man equity we look at equitable remedies one of the 20 equitable maxims at law is um you know, equity acts in persona. You have um, sweet suri juris propria persona. That's in one's proper person. We look at persona. Person is not English English. It's not American English. It's not Canadian English. It comes from Latin. And Latin is where person of the English origin is derived from. So when I tell you we're speaking a common tongue known as English, no. We're speaking and trained and indoctrinated all across the world into legalese. And for a tiny little square mile of london it's done a fantastic job because it's very very small and it's encapsulated multifaceted ways with the monarchy and the and the churches all of us into its club the club of rome the totalitarian tiptoe so we stop being persons and we can articulate abrahamically biblically and with regards to uh, the language itself, the Latin, the cross-referencing, the human rights, the Universal Declaration. Wait, wait, the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights says this, all 
humans. Remember, I'm speaking common English, yeah? So don't be calling it, oh, it's a monster because it isn't a monster because I'm not speaking that language. I'm speaking plain English, H-U-E hyphen man. All humans, or H-U-M-A-N, all humans, colour of man, are afforded the right to be recognised as a person in front of the law. So if you choose to accept that right and accept it, it's given to you by default, you're born into a club Yes, and you're put into a public legal capacity by default unless you know how to get out and exit Babylon and go back into the lands of uh, of safety from the water to the land, if you want, back to <clears throat> the lands of milk and honey, to the promised lands, taking the father's name in vain, the all capital name, the date of birth, a name, an object, a thing, a noun, something that can be represented. Man presents, man is not recognized at law, man is not able to speak to a judge in a in a in a lawful way equity personam persons um god not being a respecter of persons equity acting in personam so you have to separate with your paperwork the all capital and you can perhaps go in um sui jury um propria persona in one's proper person um pro se cuter and um personam pro se cuter pro for se is of cuter cuticle and um, that little bit there that we have under the nail skin for the skin cruce fiction cruce cross say of fiction fiction cross of fiction so it's like hmm you know we've got to separate a lot and we can articulate why we have a pro se cuter why you go into probate how you look at presenting and um, if uh, I'll be honest with you, when I found equity, the maxims of equity, legal equity, I thought that was the last bastion and we'd found the way to being in the private. But to be fair, in the teachings and the rulings, we are presenting the person, but we remain separate to the person. We ditch the all caps and the person that the, the charges are against becomes the beneficiary. The judge is made the trustee, you know, and we are the grantor settlor. We are the principality of the source of energy that that birth certificate represents, that legal person, the certificate, the ID is the legal um, part of us. We have ourselves, man, the principal and our data self. How is that possible? Well, at the delivery room and at the hospital, mum gives baby life. They are incarnate into this reality and they are then crowned and they are in the, the what's called the age of innocence. But then in England, we get registered sometime after and we lose the age of innocence and the citizenship is born, you see. So then you then become civilly inactive from birth, born date all the way to 18 here, maybe 21 in some other continents. At that age of 21 in England, we get a birthday card with a key on it. That key denotes the keyway to the door, the key to unlock the door. The door is which is the age of majority, military battle, general public, the general. We have secretaries and generals and chiefs and chiefs of staffs in office, the military. We have reverend captains in the church so we can exit the war should we be able to um, attain the, the, the wisdom and knowledge to get out. And the key in uh, the age of 21 represents that we should actually then start to claim the estate and manage the other estates uh, respectively. So the court-based scenario with public legal persons and us not being men, well, children of the creator, men of the realm, is a, is a big deficit for us. So we're not a person, we're man with persons because God created man, creator created man, however you want to put it. Man created government, government created persons. So this is the way that we articulate what I'm saying to you and why, other than the Latin and the biblical connotations and the teachings from, you know, Jesus uh, H. Christ himself. Um, the birth certificate given to us, it says in England at the bottom, this is warning, this is not to be used as evidence of identity. So again, if you choose to, to, to be that person, man is born and has a, a birth date, not a date of birth. A date of birth is when the ship is created. What is the ship? At the age of 
three months mum and dad register and the registrar the registrar look at what reggie is regina reggie um attorney regis convocation these rules that the papacy did since 1302 from the leadum buller and the unum sanctum forwards um the bulla papilla onwards you know the uh, they they've uh, embossed it into this uh, into this system and we take the citizenship that is called you know uh, a public legal person um, the straw man you will know it as you claim that and you use that you will not be delivered because you are recognized by the state as a citizen you know we ditch the citizen and the all caps and manage that estate and we can look at going to use the uh, private side and the equitable maxims another maxim of equity compared to the 10 legal commercial maxims axioms and precepts you know, the equitable maxims um, where the rules of law a common law statutory law not the social common law that i said harm injury and loss but where the congressional parliamentary public statutory common laws which what that's what they are they're common laws uh are mixed in with your maritime admiralty and so forth collide with those of equity equity will prevail that's not the equity that's mentioned in there yes the equity that's mentioned in there is written within the first book of um of moses which i'll just show you for those that haven't got one and don't know the gene isis the genesis the first book of moses there tells you that um that god tells adam and eve the creator the father says do what you want children naked you know and and uh, and, and i'm going away for a bit when i come back um i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you what's next and as he goes away they talk to a snake allegedly and they uh, they get tempted eve does to eat the apple they put on the fig the fig leaf they break that trust and they uh, they get kicked out of the garden of eden because the father comes back and sees the creator sees that they were in a fig leaf and they've gone and eaten from the tree of good and evil knowledge so therefore it's uh, we are allegedly cast out and dispelled and uh, marked as evil sin well not evil but no good worthless sinners and uh, the, i don't believe that that story is quite true i believe that's a codified message there is things in trust law called naked trust uh, a bear trust that was a naked trust what i've just described for you with adam and even and the creator and um, in trust law, there are bare trusts. So trusts in themselves and equity, legal equity, that's biblical equity. You've got the church with ecclesiastical equity, where you have a pyramid with equity. There's always a, a three party. It's demonstrated with a pyramid. Creator God created the world. The Christians or the, the man's are beneficiaries and the church is trustees. So we, we articulate all of this and move to the equitable maxims um, in law and we use the equitable maxims against the legal maxims because one of the rules is where the rules of public common law collide with those of equity, equity will prevail. And so there's a technique and a tactic and a language and with the inclusion of the Bible, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God, boom. You know, so I'm, I've said too much. Sorry, I, I do this and I promise not to, but I get carried away and I take you on a journey. So those that doubt can see that we can back up and articulate a lot of the way that we dispel and hold to account and we play a game a totally different way and we can articulate how we are sovereign and um, innocent and pure and um, we've been tricked and lied to. And when you go, just to close down, when you find out you're in an agreement and the one that's offered at you has been dishonorable and not given you full disclosure of what's happening, then that agreement crumbles. You express the correct titles verbally, yes, then that means that you correct that situation, as I said, with the judge being made the trustee, because they like us to be the trustee by claiming the name, the date of birth, etc. And then that means you're something of theirs that the Crown recognises. We separate that instrumentation and we hold them to account and we correct that verbally, then you go from being the legal trustee with possessory title and you correct and hold the the correct title the equitable title you put the judge as the trustee with regards to these matters and the estate of jeremita and then you look to the claimant and you say we need to just go through a few valid valid points here and establish that there is claim there's a valid claim it has standing and who it's against and your paperwork should already have put you in that place so 
you can articulate this generally by paperwork, a last will and testament, and such things to the claimants before a court. If you try and do this all in the court on the day with regards to civil issues, um, you won't generally um, have an easy time to do it, and it'll, it'll be hard. But if your paperwork proceeds, man, and you've got your estate in order, by um, letting them know, then you should you should bode well. So I hope that answers. And that was a long answer for you, but for me, I've gone and given you the short, comprehensive, somewhat uh, you know random articulation of what is civil and what is criminal, and how you differentiate that, and how you would uh, look to discharge the charges. Batteries are charged. The electricity, the charge, charge is not a crime; it's a charge. So therefore. What are we doing here? They should be discharged and not accepted, and you shouldn't have to be jailed or put in prison to uh, pay your debt to society because we're all bankrupt and all we have is promises. I yield. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a rant that was. I love that. Amazing. Uh, there are some questions coming in the chat as well, if you're open to, to talk about. Let's see if I can go back and find um, Lady Lacey was just talking about being in family court, saying it has its own rules. You can lie in family court with all with all the supposed oaths about uh, speaking the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. It's yeah. it's just like it, it's so, so thick with lies. Do you have any? You know, we're not giving advice, absolutely no legal advice going on here, but in terms of direction, especially since you've been through this. You just go into a bit more so you can see me as I am. Uh, I try and stop the glare from the glasses, that was all, because I've had some comments saying, you're lighting, David, um, fix it, because <laughs> we can't see you. So we didn't, I don't think that worked. But um, I'll say this, first of all. Yeah, Doug, we've done the disclaimer at the beginning, so we're all good to go. This is just mm -hmm. a, a family chat mm -hmm. um, where we give information and share our knowledge. So jurisdiction, jurisdiction and jurisdiction, jurisdiction of language, jurisdiction of venue, jurisdiction of the implied um, um, rights and, uh, you know, authority that they claim to have. Is this, um, is this um, uh, law and are we dealing with, what's that say? I've got a message on the screen. Oh, no, it's all right. Um, is this law or is this civil? So you need to know what jurisdiction and implied authority the court has at the moment because family courts are kind of administrative. We have Halsbury's laws over here to reference and we have um, civil, like I said, the maxims of equity. Research, please. And um, if you join and come to see us, we will help you. Um, I'm not here to advertise and, and promote, but if you join that domain there, um, it's 12 English promises. You know, there are other places to go and there are other people to learn from. And I'm not here to desperately plead with you, but we have all of this articulation and I've shared with Beth our publications. Um, she can share them with anybody whom she pleases for free as well. So okay. Well um, you, you use... Uh, um, the maxims and you have the commercial maxims of law there so you need to know the rules of the game that are played on the court the jurisdictions the various ones of the venue the judges the language your jurisdiction many things at play here and you would argue and um, uh, you would not argue you would politely require from them certain things and um, if there are charges and claims you would want all of the proofs so those that make the claim are duty bound to provide the uh, the proofs of the claim so ask them tell them that you've conditionally accepted because if you deny the claim you'll create controversy if you accept the claim you said you're guilty so what other option is there you conditionally accept all claims and charges is a good idea a place to start and then you say before we get into the court your paperwork before that and I appreciate for some it's too late and you're at that stage, but for later and in the future, and then we'll get back to the court. So you conditionally accept the charges in law, at law, sorry, you are provi you are required, anybody that claims or makes a public statement of a claim to provide that proof. If you can't provide the proof and there is only hearsay, conjecture, opinions, feelings and thoughts from anybody, even in the government, which they do a lot, the social side of it, the family side of it, then there is no claim because there's, you know, it's been conditionally accepted. So we stop everything. When we conditionally accept, we put the burden of proof 
and the liability back upon the claimant. So we know to use their rules because before when we was all about common law and Magna Carta and constitution, we wasn't doing business correctly. We was vexating people. We was causing injury, harm. We was um, damaging the crown, so to speak. And the judge's oath and the, 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 the law society's oath and they can't damage the crown. And if we demand and we say we're men and we so they can't hear us and we don't present the correct instrument, we don't implement the instrumentation, then we're at a loss. And what we were taught before was phony, futile, irresponsible, non-logical way of doing business. And as I say, we're not in the society and we don't respect them. We treat them with contempt, but we've learned to play them, to box clever at their own game. Instead of submitting below, we've got and we've got the gloves on and we defend. We're not violent. We don't promote violence. So we do it in what's called with clean hands. Pontius Pilate couldn't find fault with JC, but the, they still ordered him to be crucified, yeah? There's a code there for you as well. There's a message to listen to. So why did they kill the son of God when they couldn't find no fault with him? I wash my hands of him. It's called a clean hands doctrine at law, what they're using. So you are to be those that seek equity must come with clean hands. You can prove you've got clean hands and you've followed and been honorable in this militant, oppressive, divisional, saturnalia, satanistic um, system you will get your claimant into what's called default. And if they're in a position of default, then the claim has no standing validity and it can't go forward. They're in what's called a fault, default, dishonor, and it will be discharged. So what we have to do is to look at, as I'm trying to really concisely and calmly put this to you, there are ways, they're called civil procedure rules, CPR, much like the uh, the medical term for resuscitation again, yeah? yeah, the CPR that you do. So the civil procedure rules, this is England, because I don't know Canada where this um, question has come from, but it will be basically the same because London has shipped it out with their lordship, justice, you know, ship, lordships, judges, that's what they are, the boats uh, for the relationships of this. And then you would look at... Um, the uh, pre-action protocols and what's required within your state and then you'd look at the respectable laws that govern that and the higher laws, the supreme courts, you have a supreme court most places, England has a supreme court so if you fail to get business done correctly and you think you've been robbed yeah, or you've been crucified unjustly you would appeal as an appellant and you would go to a higher court um, that has permission we say in England from the Lord Chancellor in which to deal with equitable matters. We need a court of equity to do business. And as you're talking about children, our sons and daughters, our assets that we created, mum and dad, without any state, without any court order, without any legal, we did this lawfully. We did a bedroom dance and we created a family member. I told you I'd be clean. I'm trying you know, my best. <laughs> family to be involved and so no le legal permissions and remits were used so then you've got your asset your blood and the state are coming to take control and they're using things that they shouldn't be using and they're tricking you and as long as you've not harmed them and there's no damage and you try to meet them with the maxims that i've shown you in equity and you try to alter your status standing position at law you put the liability and the burden of proof upon the claimant you for you follow here we have a green book um, called the civil, the civil Court Practice, and that's what they use here for administrative civil issues. So you need to look at your civil guidelines and your laws there. Um, we have got American inf information that we can give, court information, um, legal stuff that I'm not able to give you now. And you would um, look at staying in honour, keeping clean hands, checking the jurisdictions, and um, if you fail to do that in the first instance, you would look to appeal and look to go to a court of equity and you would look to go in one's proper person, um, ditch the name, the date of birth, um, the old cap surname, taking the father's name in vain and you would present privately, not represent as I've said, and you would then look to go and do justice in a court, get justice in a court of equity and hold the claimant to account um, with their liability and insurances and you would look to validate the claims um, uh, and and that's as much as I can say for now because each mm -hmm. case is based solely upon its merits and it, they're all at different stages and you're all across different continents and we're chatting on three platforms so you have to appreciate my position 
in that respect. Yeah. Absolutely. And if they wanted to contact you, obviously going to your, your website, www.splspro.com and uh, signing up for a mere 12, uh, did you say credits, uh, you know, for, for a year, by the way, that's, that's I think mm -hmm. in, in American dollars, it might be, what, it was $17 or something, like absolutely nothing. And uh, so absolutely, you know, definitely, definitely check out uh, that work. And, and then you help people one-on-one -on -one as well. And uh, by yeah, the way, we, yeah, I was just gonna say thanks to, to Joe for the tip on Rockfin, that's so fun, I, I'm new to that. <laughs> um yes we we have um dedicate we have a telegram open public chat we have mm -hmm. um um we have clean hands we have a facebook presence i'm not a fan of that network and what it stands for anymore um maybe in the beginning but we do a facebook um trust that's available for you to find on the home pages by clicking the blue f and then we have the private domain which is strictly private and it's um it's the foundation educational trust where we do all of this stuff where you can be chat you chat with me via comments forums um we have um, a social aspect to it a resource library um well literature library resource vault i just uh, we've got 400 pdfs in there blackstones commentaries halsbury's commentaries um william Blackstones, when I say that, you know, American type uh, law commentaries, Black's Law, um, Halsbury's, and lots of publications for the cross continent. So that's um, a low uh, donation requirement because we want to try and get everybody in for, you know, it's not so much um, trying to rinse you for your promises and credits. We want to make it as low as possible for the clean hands aspect, even though this information that we hold and the articulation that we give can be, can be a lot of money can be charged for it, a lot of credits. So mm -hmm. in addition to that, if you can't deal with Facebook because of your principles and you don't have the $17 to come and uh, join our trust and donate, build the community, grow the community, then you can go to the public telegram chat and there's about 280 in there it's uh, it's only a few months old we just thought we'd utilize that aspect and see how we go and those of us that are then um kind enough to grow our community and join our um educational trust get a private link sent to them for a private telegram chat that we have and if you would then further like an hour with me and um, we've just now implemented a calendar where you can book via spl's pro uh, an hour with me which works out at 50 promises 50 quid 50 pounds um which are probably 75 ish dollars or thereabouts uh, but we are not uh, fluent in advice because that's legal and that's the london law society and your extension of the crown via the american bar association and so forth but we can help you with um others uh, information which will keep you in good stead with abrahamic biblical um you know civil felonies um how to we've done a lot of work in america um with america like uh, equity another maxim of equity equity will not aid a volunteer now what does that mean that means that if you volunteer the name give me your name then you've volunteered, then you've, mm -hmm. you've, you've, you've entered into their realm. There's things that we can still give you, even though I'm Anglo-based and I do English um, jurisprudence, English law, English articulation. The same club has ensconced itself, as you know, by the boats and the, uh, the colonization, the massacre of the American Indians and then the, the pioneers and what they did. It came from England, um, Christopher Columbus, namely and that lot there i'm not blaming any of you but it's factual history we know the queen and the, the uh what we'll say the establishment the crown went and stole them lands and and we occupied so i'm not blaming you i'm blaming us if anything so you're all got clean hands but we went and colonized somewhere and we established post offices railroads and the crown system in the form of you've had your wars um what independent well you haven't because you say you've had a, a, a an american revolution and independence wars but to have a war you need to follow certain prerequisites internationally which are a declaration of war and after the war a peace treaty neither of them documents were done so either you never had a war or that you're still at war because you haven't got a peace treaty after that so we're quite well versed in all that you need to know but we are not solicitors and we won't claim to be and we don't give legal advice but we can help you 
understand and get a better inner over and once you're in an overstand you can understand and look at the foundations and see that they're not very strong so and um, we would appreciate you know all support that could be given in, in any form um, and um, we ha can help you in many ways and there's 400 PDFs of which at least 50 to 100 will be relevant to you the ecclesia the biblical the legal the uh, the commentaries in laws and things like that so the maxims of law you can find yourself you don't need me and um, you can look at the 10 commercial maxims of law search for the 20 equitable maxims of law look for what um, equity is legal equity and look for courts of equity in america research your supreme courts and look what a supreme court is and what it's used for and articulate your way um, from the at law levels that you're at and use those rulings and guidelines and principles maxims precepts of the bible are you a christian nation yes you are so you've got a bible you want to swear the whole truth nothing but the truth so we can get you into that paradigm and we can show you but david i'm a darker skinned family member and i'm a muslim doesn't matter you can still get in that way this is not just for white anglo-saxon protestants i assure you this is for all and you can use allah you can use muhammad peace be upon him you can use buddha vishnu dharma brahma all of the faves are included within this because the the stronghold that occupies via washington and london and uh, headed up to the vatican at the top in italy the Vatican City, it's not part of Italy, they have a system and they've given you a pathway out. That pathway out I've attempted to show you in this one hour and 40 minutes. And if they are a Christian nation, then when I helpfully show you and show you where it's written and codified, you can then use that and um, it's for all and it's um, it's non-discriminatory. The human rights play a big part. You've got ratified treaties, covenants, political, social, universal rights that are all across. Um, how do I put this? There are five member, permanent member nation states on the United Nations Security Council. America is one of them. The UK is another one. So therefore, they have got ratified treaties under uh, covenants and accords, political, social, and religious. So you see? That's another way out. They're universal. So I can point you into the direction of how to use all of this. Uh, it is, as I say, it's multifaceted. You can see the research and discovery that we've had to do to get away from the previous information that we was given with regards to constitution but why don't you use constitution it's the great thing of america um, by the founders well the founding fathers were racist mur alcoholic murderers in my opinion and my discovery they weren't good people they wrote things that did you wrong and if you look at your 14th amendment to name one of them it attaches all persons to the national debt so persons again 14th amendment constitution why racist supreme alcoholics no thanks not at all they're not they're not for use i yield there i've done it again sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic oh my gosh this stuff make, makes me so happy to hear it's just my world never made sense my whole childhood i'm just like huh that doesn't make sense and say no to that because that doesn't make sense and now finally things are coming into focus so it's uh, it's a joy you know even though we're waking up to this incredible uh, tyranny and uh, lots of potential horrors um so ryan donovan <laughs> had a, a question a while back and i just wanted to see what you have to say kansas has a, a certificate of life birth not all caps does it make a difference or is that just uh, kind of irrelevant it's really about it, intent They've got a certificate of live birth. Yeah, many, many do. So what you'd need to, not many do, but some have found that at the hospital now in England. Uh, well, the United Kingdom is a paper-based format. England is the United Kingdom, you know, uh, of Great Britain, the landmass that that sits on. The UK is a paper-based trust. So depends where it, what jurisdiction that's from and, it, and how you've done that. Um, where you've got that from, what office, and how you would then effect that to assert your rights. As I've just said, there are universal, fundamental human rights that we've all missed, okay? You may be able to prove, you know, like I can, that I, man, David, have a person via various paperwork, but just let me point you back to the basic. Is that live birth certificate going to be recognized and acknowledged, and is it supported by the courts? If they dismiss that and say it's hokum, it's hearsay, then what do you do? What I'm going to say is 
I, I like that and I'm not discrediting it at all because it's the right train of thought. But what we are missing is there are international, universal, fundamental, non-deniable rights that you can use. When you appoint somebody in office in the government as a trustee in England, they're governable by the ministerial code. Now, the ministerial code is governed by international remits. It's out of the uh, Queen's royal um, courts, the crown itself. So ministers, ministers are found in churches, you see minister and the ministerial code is internationally governed and it's governed and ratified via the treaties via united nations and the european courts of human rights and they're very powerful and they're recognized on many land masses and they're for you to choose to look at and accept so with your live um birth certificate then um you know we've we call it the c-o-l-b certificate of live birth but birth B-I-R-T-H, you know, not B-E-R-T-H, but in England, the uh, interpretation of the word birth includes stillbirth. So be careful of the language that you're using and where that's come from or what that means, because if I get that from England and the English government's interpretation of the word birth, B-I-R-T-H, which is on the, uh, I've done a video on Indiglow, the, the, the chat that I've put into the chat room if you click on the channel and look at my history you will see the um inclusio alterius um video that's um it's got the latin on there the inclusion of one is the exclusion of the other uh, unus inclusio alterius see latin isn't my strong point i'm dyslexic and i'm an idiot so you know i've done that some time ago but i reference in there that with the registry uh, of part of the government for births deaths and marriages they interpret in the word birth that it includes stillbirth so if it includes stillbirth it excludes birth so if i have my live birth certificate and i take it to the legal realm and it's from the legal realm that's saying i'm still birth that's appertaining to what is the placenta the placenta is the place that you enter play center placenta um it's greek it comes from greece it's not an english word and it means flat cake okay you can't have your cake and eat it so again i'd be very careful because i've tried to put that in a respectful articulate loving way we've done our work and due diligence and we've looked for every which way and we've been down every rabbit hole and we've listened to all just about we the family the trust me and my um, research you know initiates of self and law and we've had doors slammed in our faces for the last seven years intensively since we established sovereign um you know para in 2015 some six years ago so i didn't just wake up and fall into this and go i'm sovereign let's go and chat about it i know and i can prove it i've got you know passion in my heart i ain't afraid to show it and um i'm sovereign and i know it all right and, and that's the way it is i'm sorry i had to get a little bit of fun that was from um, L lmfao yeah and uh, a little bit taken from that so you would so use good. in that with that to back that up all right you look at the united nation the universe the united nations universal declaration of human rights search for it now and look at article six all humans are afforded the right to be recognized as a person in front of the law what you do is you say i respectfully and i politely decline the right to be recognized as a person in front of the law so help me god who are you well as i've said via the scriptures and the passages i am um in reflection you know um the uh, the true sovereign authentic man Ma persons aren't mentioned in there god created man and man created governments government created persons persons are given to you in the human rights for you to be to, to be recognized as if you so choose i respectfully and politely decline the right to be recognized as a person in front of the law person comes from latin persona the mask when they were acting in the Colosseum of roma and the people at the back rows couldn't hear the actors, um, you know, copywriting. They were copying right the script that they were given. All right, the actor, um, persona, personam, equity acts in personam, person, persona, persona Latin mask. Well, why? Because they had a pursed lip on the mask, at the, uh, on the, so it would push the sonar through the mask so the people at the back could hear the actors speak. 
So persona is where the Latin mask comes from that the Roman actors used to wear, and that's how it was transcribed into law, so they could correlate what they was doing. The bar commit bar the baritary and personage reason and reference what personage is and you will find but so this is why we say god be no respecter of persons we will go into this deeper and i'll take more questions to keep the flow going but if you then choose to be respectfully declining the right to be recognized as a person in front of the law then what does that leave you then leaves you with the the title of man leaves you with the creditor the grantor the set lord not grantor set law you are authentic sovereign man you are the principal source of credit so by being born and taking the the commercial body of the person with you you can through your paperwork if you have a last will and testament um for instance you are that um you have a will you think therefore you am you've managed your estate you know i think therefore i am and you reference and you can use um the articulation within what are you showing there is that some article united in the universal declaration of human rights article six yes yeah have you yeah, got it exactly. are you, is, am i saying it right have you found it does it read what i've said Yes, everyone has the right to recognition everywhere as a person before the law, right? Like, oh, you know, I've been hearing this all my life, <clears throat> but now I know exactly. Yeah, I know exactly. Thank you. Thank you. That what, So what as these... About. As these yes. nations have got treaties and they're signed up, we've got the Geneva Convention, you've got various other conventions. Look at all of the human rights from 1949 all the way through to present day. Make them your best friends. Put them with the 10 commercial maxims, axioms and precepts of law, the biblical precepts. Put them with the 20 maxims of equity. Get yourself some dictionaries or come to SPLS Pro and utilize our archive of over 400 PDFs, which mm -hmm. includes all of the dictionaries you'll need to reference look at latin look at oxford look at american english look at american law dictionaries look at uh, various scholars and ones that have done this work and think about it articulate your claim and present yourself in your non-legal so when i talk about we've done and i've given you the publications beths so of uh, mm -hmm. the status standing in capacity and why we have moved from public to status public standing legal capacity um sorry state i've said it wrong it's my own work so, so it's public legal person so status is public yeah, standing is legal and capacity is person and we move from public legal person to private lawful womb man which is your status standing and capacity private you know status not the public default yeah your standing is then <clears throat> excuse me lawful not legal and instead of being a person you are a man and that's what article 6 will help you do along with your live birth certificate as much evidence if you're going to make a claim in front of anybody and you want to then be able to establish that and have it recognized in a court as i've said the reasons we do what we do is because we've tried other things and they walk out i'm not listening and they go and they'll issue a summary judgment in your absence you will fail to do business correctly you will vexate and intimidate and they won't like it they may go out and come back in and change jurisdiction on you they may change the color of their robe and you need to be attentive as to what's happening there so to make it easy we use things that are recognized internationally that they can't argue with. And if they ignore it, then we go and tell the international community and then they'll have something to say. And the Supreme Court know about this. So if you lower de facto county, magistrate, district, whatever it is in your nation state, you know, don't let you play ball, then you have to appeal. You have to appeal to a court of equity or to a higher court and tell them that these lot didn't acknowledge your human rights and your biblical religious rights. And they're written into those covenants there alongside with the codified teachings of the Bible and um, the languages that they use. So they don't like it and they're not happy about it. So the last bit I need to say is your paperwork that you give them before you go in, will let them know in advance in a public courthouse courtroom venue boat in dry dock a vessel you know basically their ships look at the miami look at the look at your americans miami courthouse building get that up on the on the screen and share that with them what shape is the miami courthouse 
It's a boat shape. I'm on the roof of Miami Courthouse. They've even put it like a boat with the engine room and everything. I believe it's that. I hope it is. So looking it up. Uh, yeah, um, I, I would like you to consider using paperwork to inform the court in advance of your hearing or your trial or anything like that. And this is mostly for civil areas. If you're in a criminal area, I'm afraid that you've committed a crime and those that you it's written there more than anything, as well as in uh, actual real law, that you need to make amends for that. We are talking here, and I'm referencing civil, arbitratory, administrative you know, types of areas. When you've done a crime to somebody, you need to make amends of that. And there's nothing I can really do about that. There we go. Look at that for a laugh. Look at what they're doing to you. Have a zoom in on that. Is it? Yeah. What's happening there, everyone? Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Oh, people. Oh, Romans. We've done our work. We know what the game is and the jig is up. Yeah. All right. I'm yeah. sorry to say. There are more questions because I know we're getting close to the two-hour right mark, time. my, yes, my love. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, well, uh, I'll, chances are I'll have to have you back on again because this is way too much fun for me. And I know my audience is very much enjoying it. Uh, we have the, the, the pleasure and honor of having Dylan Saccaccio. I'm not sure if he's still here, but he made a comment earlier. He's a great speaker. You two would get along very well, by the way. And uh, if I... <laughs> read his books. I'm going to have him on here too, for sure. You're always welcome, Dylan. And uh, he, he said, Adam is Boots, Eve is Virgo, awesome. uh, Serpents. Uh, yeah, are, are you familiar with Dylan already? No, I'm, okay. I'm not. I'm just sending some love out because I'm keen to expand and hear and I don't have all the answers and I'm not, a, you know, a know it all. I've just got a bit of information I like to share. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a little bit. No, oh, you're in a lot. So much, so much. Uh, so, uh, Adam is Boots, Eve is Virgo, Serpents is the Serpent. Look at what time of year they correspond to when the sun moves through them and you have the fall. Yeah, so he's re he's referring back to the uh, the astrotheology side of, of these stories, which I know you've reflected as well. And uh, so I apologize, I probably missed a lot of comments holding on to those ones. Any Anything you want to say more about that? It is. We've disregarded the planets and the planets. The Bible is another way of looking at the seasons and the planets and Zeus, Jesus, uh, um, Jupiter, Jupiter, Saturn, Saturnalia. It's no joke. It's uh, Santos and Jordan Maxwell uh, have taught me that and I've gone off their work and then I've gone and looked at it and double checked it and seen the connection between Saturnalia, the Saturn, the eater of its children, Mars, the, the god of war, the Greeks. The Greeks had it locked down, and we've disregarded that. They've gone to the orthodox side of things, where you've got Catholicism. You need to look at the church in itself, heresy, heretics, and the way that they've managed the... Um, the reformation of the church the romans and then the um the jesuits uh, you know uh, the cabal you know i'm not talking about the kabbalah which is uh, genuine you know decent teachings from the torah you know look at the talmud look at the recent uh, you know books there and what they've got and the civilizations and who's got ties to who where the the um the um the black nobility went when there was a reformation who the black nobility are you know i haven't got time in the last bit as we approach two hours to go into this but the planets and the um the uh, the astro theological word meanings and references to gods and, uh, and and the way that it's set out has been on purposely obfuscated from us but they hold it in their high esteem millionaires don't use astronomy billionaires use astronomy i'll let you find out who said that anybody wants to do a search on that quote you will find out a very 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 rich man said that and, and to, to basically do this to us you know because we've lost the connection to that um and santos and actually jordan maxwell have uh, extensively done work on this uh, that we've initially learned from and then we've had to go back all the way let me just play in then all right let me raise you one magistrates magic magi where did the magi come from the three wise kings following the star stars don't move was it a ufo was it alien was it magic i'll let you you know another time another place but the fable says they followed and there was a magi the magi the magic the the magic that they do the uh, the word magic the spelling the cursive language you see how it and the magi and who they are it's uh, it, it's no accident that they They've kept the commonality and they've the much like what was written from you know in the times of 
gone by with the Tower of Babel and the confusion of the tongues. It's been done to benefit a certain elite, elect, no, not elite, and I'll say select, elect, few, to control us. Religion, re-legion, ligature, legion, um, l ligature, ligature is to tie, handcuffs, bonds, bonds were bonded to man, they were the primitive forms of handcuffs, they're called bonds, stocks were English wooden um, things that the village idiot was put in, me back in the day for making a fool of myself and they'd throw rotten veg and fruits and tomatoes at them locked in the stocks and you yet financially speaking we have stocks and bonds you know so we have interests in partnerships and relationships you might have a healthy or unhealthy interest interest finance why is it that we have interest in making a lady or man our partner after a period of courtship again uh, wrong as you said at the beginning with the language and the resonance and the frequency this is filthy dirty foreign nasty um what we use and that's why i made a point of saying for the purposes of clarity and the avoidances of doubt plain english from brother david and that's the reason why because if you associate with that and you leave um the true source and even though this monosyllabic structure of the linguistics is still bad for us it's it's a bit cleaner and better than knowingly forgive them for they know not what they do but once you find out about this and you continue on with it you're self-crucifying and you're harming yourself through your ignorance and ignorance is a, is a choice in this age of information yes. and what we said at the beginning again so bless up i hope you've enjoyed it because i have <laughs> <laughs> so good no, this has been amazing uh, there's a little bit of confusion in the chat. There's some, something wrong happening exactly there. But um, I have to give more people wrenches so you can help me out uh, to see what's going on. Someone says I wrong, wrongly timed somebody out, but they didn't sound uh, they didn't sound good. And somebody else. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to worry about it. The the uh, talk today has been incredibly enlightening. I I knew this would happen, but I'm left with a whole bunch of very bright energy that I'm going to now take into my world. I hope that's the case, <laughs> the, the case with all of you guys uh, that joined us live. Thank you so much for being here. It's, it's so fun to interact and engage at this level and devote our attention to something that matters so much, speaking of matter. And uh, so do share this with friends. Welcome to uh, welcome to whether you've been on my my YouTube. I actually had the biggest audience ever on Rockfin, which is not that big, but it's still a good landmark. Uh, we're on Facebook. Facebook doesn't look, really like me anymore. My people on, on Facebook don't exactly uh, tune into the streams or it's heavily suppressed. God only knows. D uh, d do please like this video and share it. Right. There are people out there that need to hear this kind of wisdom, even if they just get a little window in and then they go over to to uh, David's website and get a little bit more for for um, you know 12 entire uh, pounds a year it, it, there is so much and we are working together in in all of this um, and thank you ATBA FE I appreciate that uh, yeah so good good that helps clarify a lot hello Jay Armstrong nice to see you here as well and Doc Michael and Indy Glow all these all these good ones so um, we are going to say goodbye for today, but with any luck, David, you will come back and I've made notes of a few bigger subjects that we haven't covered. I know you've got reams and reams inside you. And uh, so thank you for your work. It's, it is a huge devotion. I know you're not getting rich this way, but, but you should be supported. And I encourage everybody to, to show that support. Absolutely. Make sure no, to yes. sign up. Do make sure to sign up for the Choose Freedom Law Summit where you're going to see the interview that Matt Beller and I did with Dave, David. That was uh, that was a showstopper. I was stunned after. I, I was, you know, there are a few interviews and I'm literally left speechless. I don't know. I don't know. I can't speak for a little while. I can't even send a text for a little while. And uh, so if you if you come and check out, we've had incredible feedback. There's more than 2,500 people without barely, uh, you know, promoting or doing anything. We've had, we've had some good help. Uh, uh, the participants in in the, the Choose Freedom Law <coughs> Summit already. It's it's over uh, double what we thought would happen. Although I think I had a, a bigger vision myself. There is the link in the chat if you haven't found it in the notes already then you can go there. It's totally free. There are tons of interviews. This uh, Yesterday, we, we released Rob Menard's 
video today uh, at 2 a.m. That is, well, it's tomorrow at 2 a.m.? Yeah, so Saturday at 2 a.m. Central Time. So the Europeans can get it first. I set, I set that up because, like, right away in the middle of the night, there was a whole string of Europeans that had uh, tuned into the video, so I wanted to do that. I often can't accommodate the other time zones very nicely, but this way we can and uh because i'm a night owl also and then uh the next one is christopher gronsky another knock him down absolutely powerful so so rich not just in information but like you david it's the energy transmission this is what we lack we don't have high enough energy therefore we can't even take action we know to take never mind dive into subjects that require us to shift and change our paradigms and do some you know psychic surgery in there uh, which is really not surgery. It's just letting go of what's not yeah. us, right? Yeah. That's that the thing. We are a dirty mix of all the programming and all the BS. That's my forte, by the way, if you're new to the channel. I help people to deprogram and release the new world disorder. The Primal Power course that deals with the five archetypes weaponized against us right now that we can take control of. You mentioned the prostitute, the victim, the saboteur, the child and the masculine feminine all five of those so that course is now available you can just download it you don't have to wait for a time that i'm going to uh, run it live you can just pick it up and, and run with it so that's super good and uh, and then on sunday we are running amanda volmer yay she's that was so good again this is a, this is a very beautiful weekend david we cannot wait to share yours as well i don't know the exact date it might be the the next weekend it might be the weekend after and that's why i wanted to bring you on today so that people don't have have to wait to get a taste of your work and can go right into it uh, please do join the summit please do support david's work it's uh, it's really a pleasure i'm, I'm so glad to, uh, thanks to rice tv uh or rice rice tv x i guess yeah. is his exact name yeah yeah chris. He, he, brother chris, chris. There exactly he is, yeah. yeah he's he's the one that i found you through thank you to chris and uh i would love to be introduced to him by the way i reached out once and didn't hear back i don't know if that was uh just because uh, he's probably busy, <laughs> but uh, I'll maybe hit you up for that. <clears throat> thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, David. God bless you. My pleasure, privilege and honor. Thank you all. I've just been chatting to your room. And for the very last time, I'm going to show your website. Visit www.splspro.com. All right, everyone, lots of love for now. Have a great rest of your day. We shall see you really soon. I'm going to be off to be Farmer Beth for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> or. <laughs>